Well, as we stand 31 stories above the 9-11 memorial in this hallowed ground, we think back to that day 20 years ago that the city and our world changed forever. And of course, it is a day that we'll never forget. But the timeline of that morning, all these years later, might be a bit of a blur to you now. It was a terror attack that left the Twin Towers in rubble and the Pentagon on fire. And News 4 anchor Chuck Scarborough reported on all of the to really walk us through that morning. Chuck. Uh, Natalie, September 11th, Tuesday, 2001, was, it was a crystal clear day, very much like this one. A perfect day for flying and a perfect day for 19 al-Qaeda jihadis to perpetrate the most devastating attack on American soil in the country's history. Turning airliners filled with unsuspecting men, women, and children into missiles that would claim 2,977 lives. Nice and comfortable, clear sky out there, sky brightening, uh, brilliant looking Tuesday. Thousands of New York City voters are expected to cast their ballots today in the primaries. It's 6 a.m. and voters are trickling in to cast their ballots in a crowded and heated Democratic mayoral primary. It's a good time to get out to the polls and vote. A stop on the way to work for many New Yorkers in lower Manhattan. 300 miles away, hijackers Mohammed Atta and Abdulaziz Alamari have cleared security at Portland International Airport in Maine. 17 other hijackers will pass through Logan, Newark, and Dulles airports over the next 90 minutes. Atta and Alamari take a short commuter flight to Boston, where they board American Airlines Flight 11. The flight takes off for Los Angeles with five hijackers on board. United Airlines Flight 175, also bound for Los Angeles, is airborne roughly 15 minutes later. Moments later, a flight attendant on board Flight 11 makes an alarming call to her airline. I don't know. During the call, hijacker Mohammed Atta is heard trying to calm the passengers he will kill 22 minutes later. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York City. At 8.46 a.m., American Airlines Flight 11 crashes into one World Trade Center, instantly killing hundreds and trapping hundreds more above the 91st floor. We looked up and there was a plane. Next thing you know, we heard boom. We ran up to the corner and hit right into the World Trade Center. It was a big ball of fire that just went up. And it now reports that there was a fire at the World Trade Center. And that's, uh, that's the area where we lost the airplane. Port Authority police ordered the evacuation of both towers as first responders from every corner of the city rushed to lower Manhattan. Calls pour in from people trapped above the 91st floor. Uh, you said you got 100 people where? 106th floor. You guys trapped in there? Can't get to the stairway. Can't get to the elevators. By now, passengers on United 175 know they're under attack. Jules, this is Ryan. Uh, we're on an airplane that's been hijacked. And things don't go well. I'm looking good. I just want you to know, I absolutely fuck you. I want you to do good. So happy to time. Uh, same to my parents and everybody. And I just totally love you. And uh, I'll see you in Denver. Hi, Is he descending to the building also? He's descending really quick, too, yeah. Another one just hit the building. Wow. Oh my God. Wow. Another one just hit it hard. Another one just hit the world trade. At 9.03 a.m., United 175 strikes the south tower of the World Trade Center. Oh, you can wow. see that we've just had another explosion. Both of them now appear to be on fire. Oh, another time. one just hit. I've never seen any. It looks like a movie. I saw a large plane, like a jet, go immediately headed directly into the World Trade Center. It, it, it just flew into it. it all that we know right now is that two airplanes struck the two large towers of the World Trade Center. President George Bush is told of the second crash while visiting with children at an elementary school in Sarasota, Florida. Uh, today we've had a national tragedy. Terrorism against our nation will not stand. In Washington, Vice President Cheney and other officials are evacuated to the Presidential Emergency Operations Center under the White House. One minute later, American Airlines Flight 77 crashes into the Pentagon. You are looking at live pictures of what appears to be an attack on the Pentagon. But it's too late for the passengers and crew on board Flight 93. By now, the attack on America was playing out on live TV for everyone to see. Passengers trade phone calls and messages with loved ones who tell them about the crashes at the World Trade Center and the Pentagon. Mark, this is your mom. It's 10.54 a.m. The news is that it's been hijacked by terrorists. They are planning to probably use the plane as a target to hit some site on the ground. So if you possibly can, try to overpower these guys. 
At 9.59, as the passengers on Flight 93 formulate a plan to seize control for the hijackers, the South Tower collapses. We're not sure exactly what happened, but it was another explosion on the far side of one of the buildings from where we're standing. Four minutes later, Flight 93 crashes into a field near the town of Shanksville, Pennsylvania, after passengers and crew members heroically storm the cockpit, preventing a second attack on the nation's capital. Then, at 10.28, 9-11's final catastrophe. One hour and 42 minutes after the first plane struck the World Trade Center, the North Tower collapses. That's World Trade Center 2 has just collapsed. They're gone. The World Trade Center is, is no more. Natalie and Adam, the terrible events of that morning took less than two hours. And here we are two decades later with the shock waves from that day still rippling through our lives. In fact, around here, we've seen a number of American Airlines crews around the memorial here depositing wreaths on this day before the 20th anniversary. Oh, Chuck, we thank you so much for that look back here. And, and as we're talking about, you just you feel the calm here today, Adam. I'm seeing the American flag. You can't see off in the distance there with the breeze going. And we really appreciate your reflections there, Chuck. Thank, thank you, you for Chuck. that. All right, we're going to be sharing the stories of victims leading up to the September 11th ceremony 20 years later. We invite you to join us for our live coverage tomorrow. That's starting at 6 a.m. That's on air online and also on our NBC4 New York app.